Mr. Chris Barnes, how are you, man? Good, man. How are you doing? I'm very well. Very excited about Undead. I was just cranking it literally before you called. You're always pushing the envelope within your own genre, you know what I'm saying? Even though you've always been death metal to the core, you're always pushing the envelope with what you do. And why don't you tell us a little bit about the production process of the record? I heard that it was very smoothly for you, so why don't we t you know, tell the public about you know, how the production process was and why you felt so comfortable this time around? Well, it was real comfortable because I had such excellent writers that were um, submitting such amazing material to me to write to, and I had such a great team in the studio with Mark Lewis and, and Jason Sukoff. Um, so, you know, it, it really made it effortless, you know, to have such great guys surrounding me, you know, Rob Arnold, uh, Kevin Talley, Steve Swanson, uh, Ben Savage, Yari Lane, you know, all these, all these great musicians. So, um, it made it really exciting for me and the, uh, you know, the way myself and Rob Arnold tracked our stuff, you know, was, it was basically, we wrote and recorded our parts over about a, a, a year and two months uh, of writing and recording. So it was just a, a lot different. And uh, it was an intense uh, writing session, but it was effortless and just, it, uh, it just felt really, really good, you know, so we had a blast. And what was the reason behind the lineup changes? Were you looking for a new chemistry behind the band members? Um, well, actually, at first, I started, I actually started working with Rob Arnold uh, on the new material, oh, about three months prior to um, Harry and Greg uh, leaving the band. So I was really, at that point, um looking to, to just collaborate with new writers and then it kind of went from there right and here we are on may 22nd you're releasing yet another album and chris because you've done so many albums in the past as people know out there and what keeps you going back on tour going back into the studio what is that fire that keeps you going well it's just what i do it's who i am you know this is my my essence and that's what i've learned to kind of embrace over the years and uh, really recognize and, and feel as though that that's really, this is my purpose for being here is to do this. And to me, that that's really exciting when you figure, figure that out in your life, you know, and you really truly believe it and, and know it in your heart, then everything seems to be in alignment. So I, I really can't, I'm really happy with the way things are. <laughs> and when you started out many, many, many years ago, did you expect to build such a legacy of, you know, crushing music? Oh, you know, I'm never one to have too many plans unless, you know, maybe I look about a year in advance at the farthest, but I'm never one to have like a, you know, five or seven year plan or, you know, <laughs> I'm pretty typical, I guess, for, for a musician, but yeah, I don't plan too far ahead, so I've always kind of been like that, even before I was in a band, so I guess I was born to do this in a way, but yeah, I'm always like the one that kind of lives for the day or for the moment, and you know, if I can keep that moment kind of moving forward, then I'm happy and I'm comfortable, and I always felt like I, you know, had something to offer people, I guess, so I've just been really lucky, I, I suppose, to be surrounded with, you know, good folks like the like Metal Blade, you know, for so long, you know, I've been with them for half of my life. Yeah, right, it's a very long working relationship, and since you brought it up, what do you think sets the people at Metal Blade Records apart from other labels or executives in the business? Oh, well, I don't have any experience when, with other labels directly, because I've only been signed to Metal Blade. Since 1989, so but what what makes me know that they're a great label and a great group of people is that they really care and they've been like family to me. I mean, seriously, family. When you have been surrounded by folks for 23, you know, years and work with them closely on every level of your life, and they know you and you know them like that. I mean, there's not. You know, no one can tell you that that's not a family relationship. You know, you know they've looked after.
Absolutely. And Chris, if you had to point out a few songs out of Undead, whether when you were writing them or whether when you were recording, that really sound out for you, which songs are those? Um, well, all of them, really. I mean, there's been the 14 months that, you know, we recorded and, and wrote um, between myself, Rob Arnold, Ben Savage, Gary Lane, and Steve Swanson. We wrote 26 songs, so it's kind of hard to just pick out what one. They kind of all stood out because I just kept being so, I was, it was the best writing session ever. But, you know, I think I, I, it's hard for me to do that because I think that there's a, a, a real lot of them and a lot of them that are going to be on the next record that will really stand out. But, you know, Reckless really was kind of a effortless song for me to write and kind of wrote itself. Uh, as well as like uh, The Scar and 18 Days and The Late Combustion Device too. And so, you know, those are all ones that kind of had that vibe when I was writing them that they were kind of, you know, I wasn't really writing them, <laughs> they were writing themselves. And how do you prepare yourself for the vocal sessions? Because I know they're very intense. How do you actually, how do you get into mindset and vocally speaking, how do you get into that mode? Oh, for writing lyrics and vocals? Um, well, first off, you know, I mean, I, it's no secret that I uh, use cannabis um, on a daily basis for numerous, numerous things, but a big part of it is my spirituality and uh, my belief that you know, using the herb in a, in a spiritual way as a sacrament, you can reach uh, a higher attention plane where you are a little more perceptive to things. And I use that to open up that gateway, the third eye, what have you, um, to explore my imagination and to delve into that and to maybe find a meditative spot where I can um, transfer what the song is musically to the storyline that it's showing me in my in, 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 on that level, on that dimension, whatever it is. Right, and upon going into the studio to record the vocals, how do you prepare your throat for such intensity? Because... I know you're known for going pretty crazy behind the microphone. So how do you prepare your throat for that? You know, because obviously it doesn't come from one day to another. You've been doing this for years. But how do you prepare for the recording sessions? Um, well, you know, I rehearse a lot. So I, I rehearse on a daily basis. And, and when I'm writing uh, the songs, I just hear it in my head. And I really don't prepare things um, any specific way for the studio, I, you know, I just, I'll, you know, smoke some, some cannabis again and, and, and delve into that same, uh, that same kind of meditative state and, and, and work from there, really. Upon the release of Undead on May 22nd via Metal Blade Records, you're hitting the road with Dying Fetus and Revocation. What can people expect out there? Because it's been a while since you headlined the U.S., so obviously everybody's very excited. What can people expect this time around from Six Feet Under? Oh, man, it's going to be a blast. You know, I'm really looking forward to that tour big time. Ever since uh, last summer when we were on the uh, Summer Slaughter Tour with uh, everyone, Dying Fetus was a part of that as well. And uh, I, every night I heard fans, you know, tell me, hey, you guys got to come back to, you know, we're here, you know, and you got to bring Fetus, you guys and Fetus. And I'll tell you what, man. Every night of that tour for five weeks, at least one kid said that to me when I was at behind the t-shirt stand signing autographs. And, you know, these are such great dudes. We've known those guys. We've done tours with them in Europe. Uh, you know, I mean, and it's always awesome to be on tour with people you're friends with. You know, I've always said for many years that, you know, if the bands are having a great time backstage, then the fans can count on an awesome show, you know. So it, uh, it's always it's always fun, and I think this tour is going to be, you know, just like that. We're going to have a blast, and uh, there'll be stories written about this one, too. Hell yeah. 
And any plans to go to Europe, Australia, anywhere like that after the North American tour? Well, we're going to Australia um, prior to that. We're going to be heading down there in about two weeks. We're going uh, down there with uh, Dark Stower and, and Devil Driver, and that will be awesome. There's another couple bands that we're really close with, good friends with. You know, I'm really good buddies with Dez from Devil Driver. And uh, so, you know, that's going to be a blast. Uh, and that'll happen in the beginning of May. And then, you know, the June tour in the States. And then we've got some uh, summer festivals uh, booked for uh, Germany and, and Europe, uh, Bach and Summer Breeze and uh, Brutal Assault in Czech Republic and some club dates as well over there. So we're going to be pretty busy. We've got some other things that we're working out towards, you know, fall time and towards winter now, so there's going to be, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, touring for us and a lot of, uh, you know, hopefully great fans that are going to be wanting to hear a new album out there. Absolutely, and any plans on taping any music videos for Undead, for any song on Undead? Um, you know what, I just actually uh, proofed the, uh, there's a lyric video that we're just finishing up um, that should come out. Uh, next week, so uh, that's the, that's kind of the new thing is these uh, lyric videos, and uh, it's really it looks really cool. So interested in everyone seeing that. And we had talked about doing a music, regular music video, traditional one, but um, I'm not sure what what they had planned. We're still thinking about it, but I think we want to wait until the album drops to see uh, see what the reaction is and. To see Right on. Chris, I want to thank you very much for all the years of carrying the torch of heavy metal worldwide, for all the hard work, you know, because I know it's not easy to be on the road and to be constantly on the radar. You know what? You've never gone anywhere. You've, you've faced a lot of opposition, but you've always been strong at it. And, you know, you deserve every single bit of success, man. And I want to congratulate you for that. And I know you have many more years to come, man. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that, dude. That, that's really nice of you to say. And, uh, Thanks for all the great questions and, you know, taking the time to want to talk to me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And we'll see you on tour. For the guys listening out there, Six Feet Under's new album, Undead, is out May 22nd by Metal Bay Records. Chris, have an awesome evening and thank you very much. Thanks a lot, buddy. I appreciate it, man. Thanks. And that was Chris Barnes from Six Feet Under. Stay tuned for more Hornsop Rocks interviews. <laughs> Just gathering, what's going on with this? Picture of undertaking.